Rune 32 of the Kalevala. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kalevala, compiled by Elias Lonrut, translated by John Martin Crawford, Rune 32. Kulavo as a Shepherd. Kulavoinen, wizard serpent of the blacksmith Ilmarinen, purchased slave from Untamoinen, magic sun with sky blue stockings, with a head of golden ringlets, in his shoes of marten leather, waiting little, asked the blacksmith, asked the host for work at morning. In the evening asked the hostess, these the words of Kulavoinen, give me work at early morning, in the evening occupation, labour worthy of thy servant. Then the wife of Ilmarinen, once the maiden of the rainbow, thinking long and long debating how to give the youth employment, how the purchased slave could labour, finally a shepherd made him, made him keeper of her pastures, but the over-scornful hostess baked a biscuit for the herdsman, baked a loaf of wondrous thickness, baked the lower half of oatmeal and the upper half of barley, baked a flintstone in the centre, poured around it liquid butter, then she gave it to the shepherd, food to still the shepherd's hunger. Thus she gave the youth instructions, do not eat the bread in hunger till the herd is in the woodlands. Then the wife of Ilmarinen sent the cattle to the pastures, thus addressing Kulavoinen, drive the cows to yonder bowers, to the birch trees and the aspens, that they there may feed and fatten, fill themselves with milk and butter, in the open forest pastures, on the distant hills and mountains, in the glens among the birch trees, in the lowlands with the aspens, in the golden pine tree forests, in the thickets silver laden. Guard them thou, O kind creator, shield them omnipresent Uko, shelter them from every danger, and protect them from all evil, that they may not want nor wander from the paths of peace and plenty, as at home thou didst protect them, in the shelters and the hurdles guard them now beneath the heavens, shelter them in woodland pastures, that the herds may live and prosper. To the joy of Northland's hostess, and against the will of Lempo, if my herdsmen prove unworthy, if the shepherd made seem evil, let the pastures be their shepherds, let the alders guard the cattle, make the birch tree their protector, let the willow drive them homeward, ere the hostess go to seek them, ere the milkmaids wait and worry, should the birch tree not protect them, nor the aspen lend assistance, nor the linden be their keeper, nor the willow drive them homeward, wilt thou give them better herdsmen, let creation's beauteous daughters be their kindly shepherdesses. Thou hast many lovely maidens, many hundreds that obey thee, in the ether's spacious circles, beauteous daughters of creation, summer daughter magic maiden, southern mother of the woodlands, pine tree daughter, katajata, pilajata of the aspen, older maiden Tapayo's daughter, daughter of the glen maliki, and the mountain maid to lervo, of my herds be ye protectors, keep them from the evil minded, keep them safe in days of summer, in the times of fragrant flowers, while the tender leaves are whispering, while the earth is verdure laden, summer daughter, charming maiden, southern mother of the woodlands, spread abroad thy robes of safety, spread thine apron o'er the forest, let it cover all my cattle, and protect the unprotected, that no evil winds may harm them, may not suffer from the storm clouds, guard my flocks from every danger, keep them from the hands of wild beasts, from the swamps with sinking pathways, from the springs that bubble trouble, from the swiftly running waters, from the bottom of the whirlpool, that they may not find misfortune, may not wander to destruction, in the marshes sink and perish, though against God's best intentions, though against the will of Ukko. From a distance bring a bugle, bring a shepherd's horn from heaven, bring the honey flute of Ukko, play the music of creation, blow the pipes of the magician, play the flowers on the highlands, charm the hills and dales and mount, charm the borders of the forest, fill the forest trees with honey, fill with spice the fountain borders, 
for my herds give food and shelter feed them all on honeyed pastures give them drink at honeyed fountains feed them on thy golden grasses on the leaves of silver saplings from the springs of life and beauty from the crystal waters flowing from the waterfalls of rutcha from the uplands green and golden from the glens enriched in silver dig thou also golden fountains on the four sides of the willow that the cows may drink in sweetness and their udders swell with honey that their milk may flow in streamlets let the milk be caught in vessels let the cows give not be wasted be not given to manala many are the sons of evil that to mana take their milkings give their milk to evil doers wasted into oni's empire few there are and they the worthy that can get the milk from mana never did my ancient mother ask for counsel in the village never in the courts for wisdom she obtained her milk from mana took the sour milk from the dealers sweet milk from the greater distance from the kingdom of manala from tuoni's fields and pastures brought it in the dusk of evening through the byways in the darkness that the wicked should not know it that it should not find destruction this the language of my mother and these words i also echo whither does the cowskiff wander whither has the milk departed has it gone to feed the strangers banished to the distant village gone to feed the hamlet lover or perchance to feed the forest disappeared within the woodlands scattered o'er the hills and mountains mingled with the lakes and rivers it shall never go to mana never go to feed the stranger never to the village lover neither shall it feed the forest nor be lost upon the mountains neither sprinkled in the woodlands nor be mingled with the waters it is needed for our tables worthy food for all our children summer daughter maid of beauty southern daughter of creation give swatiki tender father to watiki give pure water to her miki milk abundant fresh provisions to Tariki. from mariki let the milk flow fresh milk from my cows in plenty coming from the tips of grasses from the tender herbs and leaflets from the meadows rich in honey from the mother of the forest from the meadows sweetly dripping from the berry laden branches from the heath of flower maidens from the verdure maiden bowers from the clouds of milk providers from the virgin of the heavens that the milk may flow abundant from the cows that i have given to the keeping of colervo rise thou virgin of the valley from the springs arise in beauty rise thou maiden of the fountain beautiful arise in ether take the waters from the cloudlets and my roaming herds besprinkle that my cows may drink and flourish may be ready for the coming of the shepherdess of evening o maliki forest hostess mother of the herds at pasture send the tallest of thy servants send the best of thine assistants that my herds may well be guarded through the pleasant days of summer given us by our creator beauteous virgin of the woodlands tapio's most charming daughter fair telovo forest maiden softly clad in silken raiment beautiful in golden ringlets do thou give my herds protection in the metsola dominions on the hills of tapiola shield them with thy hands of beauty stroke them gently with thy fingers give to them a golden lustre make them shine like fins of salmon grow them robes as soft as ermine when the evening star brings darkness when appears the hour of twilight send my lowing cattle homeward milk within their vessels coursing water on their backs in lakelets when the sun has set in ocean when the evening bird is singing thus address my herds of cattle ye that carry horns now hasten to the sheds of ilmarinen ye enriched in milk go homeward to the hostess now in waiting home the better place for sleeping forest beds are full of danger when the evening comes in darkness straightway journey to the milkmaids building fires to light the pathway on the turf enriched in honey in the pastures berry laden thou o tapio son niriki forest son enrobed in purple cut the fir trees on the mountains cut the pines with cones of beauty lay them o'er the streams for bridges cover well the sloughs of quicksand in the swamps and in the lowlands that my herd may pass in safety on their long and dismal journey to the clouds of smoke may hasten 
when the milkmaids wait their coming. If the cows heed not this order, do not hasten home at evening. Then, O oh, service berry maiden, cut a birch rod from the glenwood, from the juniper a whipstick, near to Tapio's spacious mansion, standing on the ash tree mountain, drive my wayward lowing cattle into Metzola's wide milk yards when the evening star is rising. Thou, O oh, Otso, forest apple, woodland bear with honeyed fingers, let us make a lasting treaty, make a vow for future ages, that thou wilt not kill my cattle, wilt not eat my milk providers, that I will not send my hunters to destroy thee and thy kindred, never in the days of summer, the Creator's warmest season. Dost thou hear the tones of cowbells, hear the calling of the bugles, Ride thyself within the meadow, sink upon the turf in slumber, bury both thine ears in clover, crouch within some alder thicket, climb between the mossy ledges, visit thou some rocky cavern, flee away to other mountains, till thou canst not hear the cowbells, nor the calling of the herdsmen. Listen, Otso of the woodlands, sacred bear with honeyed fingers, to approach the herd of cattle. Thou thyself art not forbidden but thy tongue and teeth and fingers must not touch my herd in summer must not harm my harmless creatures go around the scented meadows amble through the milky pastures from the tones of bells and shepherds should the herd be on the mountain go thou quickly to the marshes should my cattle browse the lowlands sleep thou then within the thicket should they feed upon the uplands thou must hasten to the valley should the herd graze at the bottom Thou must feed upon the summit, wander like the golden cuckoo, like the dove of silver brightness, like a little fish in ocean, ride thy claws within thy hair foot, shut thy wicked teeth in darkness, that my herd may not be frightened, may not think themselves in danger, leave my cows in peace and plenty, let them journey home in order, through the vales and mountain byways, over plains and through the forest, harming not my harmless creatures." Call to mind our former pledges at the river of Tuoni, near the waterfall and whirlpool, in the ears of our Creator. Thrice to Otso was it granted in the circuit of the summer to approach the land of cowbells, where the herdsmen's voices echo. But to thee it was not granted, Otso never had permission to attempt a wicked action, to begin a work of evil. Should the blinding thing of malice come upon thee in thy roamings, should thy bloody teeth feel hunger, throw thy malice to the mountains, and thy hunger to the pine trees, sink thy teeth within the aspens, in the dead limbs of the birches, prune the dry stalks from the willows, should thy hunger still impel thee, go thou to the berry mountain, eat the fungus of the forest, feed thy hunger on the ant hills, eat the red roots of the bear tree, Metzler's rich cakes of honey, not the grass my herd would feed on, or if Metzler's rich honey, should ferment before the eating, on the hills of golden colour, on the mountains filled with silver, there is other food for hunger, other drink for thirsting Otso. Everlasting will the food be, and the drink be never wanting. Let us now agree in honour, and conclude a lasting treaty, that our lives may end in pleasure, may be merry in the summer, both enjoy the woods in common. Though our food must be distinctive, Shouldst thou still desire to fight me, let our contests be in winter, let our wars be on the snowfields. Swamps will thaw in days of summer, warm the water in the rivers. Therefore, shouldst thou break this treaty, shouldst thou come where golden cattle roam these woodland hills and valleys, we will slay thee with our crossbows. Should our arrowmen be absent, we have here some archer women, and among them is the hostess, that can use the fatal weapon, that can bring thee to destruction. Thus will end the days of trouble, that thou bringest to our people, and against the will of Ukko. Ukko, ruler in the heavens, lend an ear to my entreaty, metamorphose all my cattle, through the mighty force of magic, into stumps and stones convert them, if the enemy should wander near my herd in days of summer. If I had been born in Utso, I would never stride and amble at the feet of aged women. Elsewhere there are hills and valleys, Farther on are honey pastures, where the lazy bear may wander, where the indolent may linger, sneak away to yonder mountain, that thy tender flesh may lessen, in the blue glen's deep recesses, in the bare dens of the forest. Thou canst move through fields of acorns, through the sand and ocean pebbles, there for thee is tracked a pathway, 
through the woodlands on the sea coast to the northlands farthest limits to the dismal plains of lapland there tis well for thee to lumber there to live will be a pleasure shoeless there to walk in summer stockingless in days of autumn on the blue back of the mountain through the swamps and fertile lowlands if thou canst not journey thither canst not find the lapland highway hasten on a little distance in the bare path leading norward to the grove of tuonela to the honey plains of calma swamps there are in which to wander heaths in which to roam at pleasure there are kyrios there are kaios and of beasts a countless number with their fetters strong as iron fattening within the forest be ye gracious groves and mountains full of grace ye darksome thickets peace and plenty to my cattle through the pleasant days of summer the creator's warmest season nepana o king of forests thou the greybeard of the woodlands watch thy dogs in fen and fallow lay a sponge within one nostril and an acorn in the other that they may not scent my cattle tie their eyes with silken fillets that they may not see my herdlings may not see my cattle grazing should all this seem inefficient drive away thy barking children let them run to other forests let them hunt in other marshes from these verdant strips of meadow from these far outstretching borders hide thy dogs within thy caverns firmly tie thy yelping children tie them with thy golden fetters with thy chains adorned with silver that they may not do me damage may not do a deed of mischief should all this prove inefficient thou o uko king of heaven wise director full of mercy hear the golden words i utter hear a voice that breathes affection from the alder make a muzzle for each dog within the kennel should the alder prove too feeble cast a band of purest copper should the copper prove a failure forge a band of ductile iron should the iron snap asunder in each nose a small ring fasten made of molten gold and silver chain thy dogs in forest caverns that my herd may not be injured then the wife of ilmarinen life companion of the blacksmith opened all her yards and stables led her herd across the meadow placed them in the herdman's keeping in the care of kulavoinen end of rune thirty two recording by timothy ferguson gold coast australia